Hey everybody, this is Brian from GMB Homesteading, and I wanted to give an update for the uh, large grow tent we got growing right here. It's got our uh, basil, tomatoes, spinach, and the little poinsettia. So, <laughs> the curtain just moved. <laughs> All right, let me move this back. All right, now you guys can see the basil. <laughs> let me grab the camera. I'll walk you over here and you guys can kind of check this out. Actually, I'll just move the camera a little closer. And you guys can get a shot of this side of the tent. I'll kind of point out some stuff in there. Okay, so you can see the, the basil has just gotten huge over the last week. I mean, we've got some of these plants that are eight inches tall now. And we're probably going to have to pinch some of these off. Because I definitely don't want these things going to flower. But uh, they are really liking this new light. And this is one of the... That's that second generation uh, Roledo, I think it's called. Well, it, anyway, if you look in the show notes, it's going to show the uh, the equipment that I use for the large grow tent, and it should have the full name and an actual link to Amazon for what I paid for this and where I bought it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this light, and I'm actually considering buying two more of these and then hanging them kind of right here mid-level, maybe the same height as this one. That way it's going to help the spinach plants down here because spinach plants are growing, and they're putting on, you know, more more good-sized leaf. But I'd like to kick them up to where we can actually start harvesting those a lot quicker than they are growing now. Because so I just think, you know, having the LED lights way up there, high in the tent, that are made for the, you know, basically positioned for the tomato plants, isn't giving them full, you know, light capability right there where they need it most. But uh, yeah, you can see one of the uh, the tomato plants start to climb up the side of the tent there. I think that's one of the pop-ups from the uh, compost. So I may actually just, you know, want to see how tall it's going to get, what kind of fruit it's going to set, because it does have some uh, some fruit, uh, you know, buds over there that are, look like they're going to ready to, you know, put on some buds and some fruit set. We do have a lot of fruit set. Let me just get the camera over here. You can see a lot of fruit has set since last week and the week before, right on back there on the uh, indigo rose that we have here. You can see there's a lot more fruit buds over there, ready to put on fruit set. And then you can see how large, I mean, look at that guy. He's just huge. That's one of the uh, ones inside there. The other one, it's still growing. It's kind of down there in that area. And there's another little tiny guy back there. But you know, I'm not gonna worry about those. I'm just going to focus on these two bigger ones and I'm just going to vine those up, you know, come up through here and start vining them across. And then of course, you know, we've got the, the plants we've had in here for, you know, over a year and some right about, you know, coming up on a year because they're the, these two plants, they're the offspring cuttings from that one over there, as well as these newer plants are all off, cuttings off of these first generation second generation plants. But, uh, here's the other ones. You can see how tall this guy, look at that thing. It's really taken off. And that thing's probably three feet now, including the root, you know, down into the pot. Coming up through here. So I started, you know, kind of pushed him over there to the side and got him training up so he's going to grow up through and then I'll probably just train him to go up and over the top of that way. That way I'll be able to easily access the fruit. I've been, and that's one thing I'm doing this year on these plants is I'm taking off all of the suckers because before I was letting the suckers just kind of take off and grow on their own. And then you get a tangled mess like you had on that one there, grandpa plant. So I think I'm just going to take the main leader and I'm going to trim off all the suckers that come on the sides of these plants. I don't know if I have an example of a sucker that I can show you guys. Yeah, here's kind of like one. They kind of grow in the little the little crack, or I guess you can call it the crotch of the branch. You just kind of go in there and just pull those out and drop them down. I'm going to kind of get rid of all those on these plants this year. So like I got this one here that's, that's flowering. I could probably take, cut that one off right here. This is a sucker I didn't notice, but I could probably actually cut that one off right there get him out of there you know, and there's another there's another sucker right here 
just pop those out. They're real easy to pop out when they're small. But then when they get bigger, then it's like, you know, that's when you have, you know, you have to make a decision. Kind of like a little decision tree. You have to decide what you want your main, uh, your main leader or your tree to be when you're pruning your uh, fruit trees. Kind of do that same thing with your tomato plants. Uh, let's see what else can we talk about. That's the spinach. You can see it's starting to it's starting to put on some leaves, you know, down in there. The harvestable leaves going past the, the you know the, the sprouting leaves. They just kind of just get left by the wayside. They seem to be doing okay. I did add some bone meal to those, so that's what you kind of see the the discoloration in the soil. I kind of added some because with this soil. This was put in these trays before I was starting to do my uh, soil blend mix. So I was taking my potting soil. What I'm doing now in my trays is I'm putting potting soil along with uh, bone meal and the azomite rock dust. So I'm mixing that all together and it gives it a nice blend for the, uh, the seedlings. So that way I can get a, you know, as much vigor and growth out of those seedlings as I can possibly get at an early stage and make it a, you know, a quicker harvestable crop. But that's kind of the update for the uh, a large grow tent today. When I get those new lights, you know, if if Paula lets me have those, I always have to have to clear it with the wife. You know, this this can be an expensive hobby if you decide you want to go full bore on this. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the uh, the basil. I mean, that's just to, we've been we've been harvesting this every evening. We'll come down here and we'll pinch off probably 10, 20 leaves, take them upstairs and put them in whatever dish Paul is making. And if it's salad, then we have, you know, a basil salad, but we've been eating a lot of tomatoes and uh, mozzarella cheese and balsamic vinegar with this basil. That's great. I mean, I take, it, I take that with me every day to lunch at work and uh, I can never get tired of eating my fresh tomatoes. <laughs> I mean, obviously I grow all this all winter. I mean, I love tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> if the doctor ever said you can't have tomatoes anymore, you're gonna die. I'll just be like, well, I guess you better order me a coffin because I'm not giving them up. <laughs> All right, everybody. This has been Brian from PNB Homesteading. I'll talk to you again. Bye.